Do you mind taking your fur head off? Why did you want your face blurred for this video? Do you think our dogs are attractive? Because you were turned on by furries. Have sex in a fursuit is not easy. I see me. <laughs> furries. I've read the articles. I've seen the misinformation spread. It's about something called furries. Yesterday I heard that at least one of our schools has a litter box. For these children. That identify as cats. How is this sanitary? I don't even want to understand it. But other than how the media portrays this mysterious and growing fandom, I really didn't know much. But that was about to change. And trust me when I say, if you're coming for a visit, we're not gonna feed you treats like a dog. It was nothing like I had expected. Let's start at where my journey into this world began, at the University of Southern California. I met Night the Fox on Telegram, which is basically a WhatsApp, but where furries commonly talk to each other. He invited me to his dorm room under one condition. I won't film you, I won't film you, I'm sorry. That I wouldn't film him without his fursuit on. He welcomed me into the dorm room and showed me his fursuit, as well as how the movie Zootopia is what really got him obsessed with the idea of being a furry. I decided to leave, let him get his fursuit on, and re-enter. Hello there. Hello. Oh my gosh, I love it. All of a sudden, Night the Fox was a completely new person. You're beautiful. Thank you. Or a new animal, rather. His energy and confidence was completely different from the more shy and introverted person I had just met. Do you remember the first time you put it on? Yes, I do. Like, I, it's, it's always usually a very emotional moment. Uh, for me and I know other people as well, you know, it's like, you know, sometimes there are even tears shed. And so you can breathe and see perfectly in I that. can see, but I can't really see, like, as well. Like, my vi like, your vision kind of stops, like, here. Do you tell people in your normal life that you're a furry, or is that something that you keep, like, secret? I'm generally pretty open about it, but others, maybe, if they don't have, like, parents that are, like, as accepting and cool, like, stuff, that kind of stuff. They yeah. may keep it a little bit more subtle for a while. Thank you so much for like letting me join you today. Yeah, of course. Even though I know the furry community is so vast, a lot of us that aren't part of it don't know anything about it. I feel like the like the bad news gets out quicker than the good news. I think a lot of us, and I wasn't planning to hop right into this, but a lot of us, I feel like, have this sexual idea of furries that like it's something you get in your costume and you do sexual things and that's like a fetish i will not deny that there is a small like sexual part of the fandom but that is definitely not what the fandom is about you know it would be hard to have sex in a suit it seems impossible yeah i will acknowledge that there are specially designed suits that have like a zipper in the front got it i think you're clearly said but we are not making any suits for that kind of purpose we are not putting in front zippers if there's any evidence that it was tampered for that kind of use we will like void the warranty and oh wow so the furry community feels a certain type of way about other people in the community that are sexual with a furry yeah i mean i personally you know don't really enjoy that kind of stuff will you date a guy that's not a furry no i mean you know my current boyfriend he is a furry and we met through the fur meet. Theoretically, if I wasn't with him, it would be really hard to not date a furry at this point. Cause I mean, I feel like, you know, we just share this like bond as, a, as furries, you know, mm -hmm. we kind of get each other and all that stuff. You know, I honestly was kind of shy basically my entire life. There was really no place where I felt like I fit in. I think it was during like the COVID quarantine, like April 2020, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of, lonely, I need something to cheer me up, and I like kind of joined the fandom, you know. I took a risk and tried to make a friend and it worked out and then he introduced me to his friends and then it just kind of grew and grew and grew like a seed and like a tree blossoming from a seed. Now I kind of feel like I have a very tight interweb connection of friends that I've really never had before. Over the next two weeks, I integrated myself into this community in a way I have never done before. I really wanted to see the full picture of what this community was all about. The beautiful, but also the complicated and the honest. What's your name? I'm Zupper. Zupper? I'm Matt, nice to meet you. I um, work at Chuck E. Cheese and I feel like like a lot of furries are integrate, like integrating themselves into um, the public but where you guys don't know. So like there could be some working at Chuck E. Cheese, there could be one working at like a baseball field being the mascot. You just don't know because there's not really a face of furry. When did you get your fur suit? Um, I actually paid for it myself. Um, I got it like a, maybe a year ago. It was Christmas again, you know, like I haven't felt like that in forever, you know. Fursuits are very expensive. You don't need one to be a furry, of course. I mean, there's some people that don't have fursuits and that's all right. They're like around $900 though, I know. How much do you think for yours if you don't mind me asking? 900. 
And then I paid for the head, just 900 is a head. The paws, I don't think you saw them, but the paws were like 100 and the feet were 200. So the whole thing costs? A lot. A lot. A lot. So basically this, some Burmese have rooms like this is a tent here outside and basically it makes, uh, if you want a fursuit, you know, you just put your stuff in here and change in here and you know. So this is where you change because you're in a public setting, so you need yeah, to change. Yeah, you know, you, you can change in your car, it's just kind of hard. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, this stuff like this and having a nice bench here, you know, makes definitely makes life easier. Do you mind if I interview you real quick? Oh, I'm going to sit next to you, do you mind? Oh my gosh, even your tail's comfy. Oh, thank you. Do you mind taking your fur head off? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm in an exclusive. <gasps> No, you look perfect. So my whole series is about different queer people in the queer community. Are either of you queer? Are you guys straight? Or how do you? I'm sorry. I'm asexual. Oh, asexual. Yeah. So asexual <laughs> means that you're not sexual, right? Or I, I know I'm probably sounds so ignorant. I'm sorry. I'm just generally am wondering. For me, it's definitely like I I'm not interested in sex like at all whatsoever. Do you think that's something that like you? Is a phase in your life, or do you think that's a forever thing? Just like being gay is a forever thing, like being lesbian is a forever thing. Like you're, if you're asexual, that's how you are for life. That's a really good question. For me in particular, I feel like it's been like that my whole life, and it's only now that I realized, because of the furry fandom and learning about it, I really started to learn about myself, and it helped me understand that I probably was like this my whole life. Do you find yourself wanting to be in relationships with people, or do you just is that not something that interests you either? If you want to like cuddle <laughs> then i'd be totally down with it it's almost like you and you would have to find someone else who's asexual as well i would i would i would I'm think kind of wondering that too, yeah. because then they don't they're not like hey can we have sex all the time you know what i mean there's not that pressure that you feel like oh my gosh you always want to have sex and i don't want to do that or whatever you know they but they're on the same page as you with what you want I'm kind of wondering about that too but i'm not like super into the dating scene so we'll have to see so do you think the furry fandom has been like a place for you to find acceptance within your sexuality yeah most definitely i found a lot of asexual furries i feel like we're just lurking because we're just trying to be polite you know like oh yeah there's a sexual side i guess it's okay but we don't want to like stir up any trouble or anything although i had heard that the sexual side of the fandom was a side that most furries did not want to discuss i felt like with every interview Every furry was bringing it up. It made me that much more hungry to find a furry that was willing to be honest and open with me about that side of the fandom. I've come from like a weird perspective where I've heard of that, and then like, that's kind of what got me thinking it. about it, but yeah, into it. But like no one else seems to like vibe like that. At least no one openly says that now. It's like, so it's awkward. But you hear people talk about it, it's just like more of a hush thing. Back when I was in like middle school, I played a lot of video games. There was like a character from Pokemon I just like crushed really hard on at one point and my kind of favorite was like Lucario and you're like sexually attracted to him yeah he's actually pretty attractive like it's pretty strong I like that he's cute and cool and like whoa wait a minute I'm feeling something oh no hmm? uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. recently I started meeting up with furries because I've always had an interest in furries but never really got into it because you were turned on by furries yeah I was turned on by like some furry character in media and then realized like, I'm just kind of attracted to furries. I noticed with furries, like, they want to avoid the subject completely. I don't know, if you just look at, like, the group over there, you have to kind of judge, like, who's okay with that, who isn't. Because I feel like they all they all are really yeah. touchy about, like, about, right. that, about that Yeah, they're idea. touchy about that vibe. If you were dating a furry, would you want them to be in their furry suit when you were getting sexual with them? Mm -hmm. Kind of like the idea. So, like, I guess the thing is, it's complicated because, like, it gets difficult to do a lot of things in a fursuit. Like, it gets really hot in the suit itself. Just walking around in the sun for, like, ten minutes get, like, overheated. To have sex in a fursuit is not easy. I always thought maybe there's a lot of furs who just kind of, like, don't get along well with people. For one reason or another, maybe they're scarred or, like, they've been through hard things. So then, like, having the fursuit on and being, like, not necessarily, like, human uh, like makes falling in love with people or being attracted to people easier in like an odd way. I can imagine when you go to like the balls or they have like the 17th century ball and everyone has like their funny mask on and the masquerade and stuff. It feels like that kind of, yeah. but everyone's yeah. an anime weeb or like a <laughs> cartoon nerd. Okay, I'm gonna take a picture with that one. Yeah. And the little wolf and that way and that one too, all of them. They're cool, right? They're like a cool. They are so cool. I know. I love I them. I want to be in one. <laughs> Come on, Zay. Come here. Come on, Mimi. I know. I need a hobby. Yeah. That's the thing. I need something to do with myself, and I like having fun. 
Yeah. Oh, my word. So many people like are in a way ostracized and that's why they come to the furry fandom because they don't feel like they fit in in different fandoms you know you look at them they I know it's beautiful you can shed your skin for a minute and just become someone else and hang out without the fear of being judged and that saved my life and I know it saved so many other people's lives as well my time with the furry fandom was coming to a close but I still felt like I was missing an integral part of the story. With my preconceived notion of what the furry fandom was through mainstream media, I don't even want to understand it. I could only imagine how some parents responded to their children when they found out that they are now a furry. Where was the furry that was willing to open up to me about that story? This want to find that story led me to about 30 minutes outside of Los Angeles. The person I met with said they had changed their voice to not be recognizable by their family and to blur their face because of the backlash they will receive if their family comes across this video. So why did you want your face blurred for this video? Just for personal reasons, because I know a lot of people who don't really like me. I'm doing so well in life right now, like I'm, I'm doing better mentally, and I just kind of don't want to deal with like bullies and like the old people, like people that I used to know. I get out. that. Yeah. Do you feel like being a furry is a reason why you and your family aren't on a good page? When I first came out as like a furry and stuff, they were confused. They thought I was getting groomed. They were concerned and I guess the way they expressed those concerns was more at first a bit malicious. It kind of went from like, oh, so do you think our dogs are attractive? They were keeping an eye out on me because they were thinking that I was like into that. My dad called me names. He was like, if you're coming for a visit, we're not going to feed you treats like a dog. It's like, I never asked for that. I would never, I've never asked anyone to put a collar on me and give me dog treats ever. Not even a furry. Growing up, I didn't exactly know where I fit in. Furries was something I could easily fit in because there's all kinds of people and it's a very diverse community and everyone's accepting and loving. It's interesting because I've had a lot of people on my series that have gone through similar stories as you from coming out or from transitioning or, you know, something to do with being involved with the queer community. And it's a very similar journey that you're going on by opening up about being a furry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was a struggle at first. It was easier for them to accept me for being gay. With the furry community, like, what what do you... Do you feel like it's kind of like your chosen family? Oh, yeah. Um, you just light up even when you said when I said that. Like, it just... Yeah, I mean, I've met a lot of, like, a lot of amazing people in the fandom. There's a lot of people who've gone through, like, you know, trauma and stuff in the fandom, and they find love and they find warmth and acceptance. You know, they, they work through their struggles. And the furry fandom is kind of just like a helping hand for that. I have met countless furries on this adventure I went on, and they all seem to view the community as a place for them to heal, to laugh, to love, and to come into their own as not only furries, but as human beings. You know, we all look to different places to find ourselves, whether it's with our friends, our career, our family, our queer community, and in a lot of people, the furry fandom. I left my time with them feeling so lucky to have had my eyes opened about this community and the beauty that it represents. It's a reminder to never judge something before taking the time to learn about it. And that lesson is one I will take with me for the rest of my life. All right, nice to meet you. Yes. I'll see you soon. You. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> see you later. I hope you too enjoyed the adventure and I will see you soon.